Hi, I'm Charlene Jurgensen, and welcome to Quilting from the Heartland. Today we're going to work with the Snails Trail, and this design has also been referred to as the Monkey Wrench or the Virginia Wheel. This stunning design is an example of how you can take an exceedingly simple block and set it together into an intricate pattern. I have two examples of the snail's trail to share with you. The same shapes have been used to make each of them. The dramatic change in appearance from one to another is only due to the selection of the fabrics. The colors used in each of them certainly convey a different mood. The first one that we are looking at is made from scraps of plaids and stripes. Together they create a feeling of warmth. The plaids and stripes were divided into a light, medium, and dark group before they were cut. It is a little difficult sometimes to decide if the fabric should be in the light or medium group or if it should be in the medium and dark group. But in this case, a little mistake will not ruin the whole quilt. It is just the continuous flow of the color that you're striving to get. Sometimes small things which are viewed as mistakes in other quilts just add character to a scrap quilt. I did not cut each of these pieces by themselves for the quilt, and that is why it would appear that some of them are slightly off grain. When making quilts, we do not take the time to match the plaids and the stripes like you would when making a garment. This is one thing that was hard for me to get used to when I started quilting. This, de this design appears much more difficult than it really is, but even a beginner can make this quilt because it is made from just one block. Each of the blocks in the quilt has four arms. Two of them are light, one is a medium, and one a dark. And when the blocks are put together, uh, each one turned at a 90 degrees, that is when you see the snail's trail formed. The second quilt that I'm showing you today has a very bright and cheery mood. This one also has four arms in each of the blocks. It has two pink arms, one teal, and one purple arm. Each of the arms in this quilt are made up of fabrics ranging from light to dark, the center being the lightest. And gradually working out to the outside edge of the block, they get darker. The fabric used for the center square has suggestions of all of the colors used in the snails, making all of the colors look good together. When selecting the fabric, I did pay attention to the scale of the print. And when you scan over the fabrics that I used in the quilt, you'll see what I'm talking about. I tried to make sure that there was a different texture as well as background in each of the fabrics. And when you take a close-up of the center fabric used in the quilt, you'll see that it does have quite a range of different colors in it, and each time you cut a square from it, you will get a different uh, color appearing in the center. But on the overall quilt, it looks very good. The pattern shapes that we're going to use today when making the snail's trail come from Pandora's box. They are all uh, very simple to work with because it's all straight edges. And we are going to be working with templates A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, very easy to keep track of. On the back of the templates, I have put fabric grips to keep them from sliding while I'm working with them. I have arranged the fabrics in the order that I want to use them in the quilt ahead of time, ranging from light to dark, the dark being the outside of the block. And when making this quilt, you can save a lot of time uh, after you have selected the fabrics that are going into the block by cutting them uh, all in groups of three. Each piece used in the quilt is used in three uh, positions and probably I should take a block down and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Remember in the beginning we talked about the arms in the block. The one that I'm going to be cutting for has two pink arms and when you follow here you'll see one of them and here's the other pink arm. And then you'll see a teal arm 
and a purple arm. And when cutting these pieces, we will need the same shape for this one, this one, and this one. So it makes sense to cut all three of them at the same time. The same would be true for the next round. We need the same uh, pattern shape for this fabric, this one, and this one, and all the way around to the outside edge. And that will save a lot of time uh, when cutting. Not only will it save time, but a lot of accuracy. Ahead of time, I have uh, folded the fabrics in half, lining up the selvage edges out here. And then we have uh, all three of the colors that we're going to use for the one shape. And the first one that we will be cutting from will be template A. At the same time, we will straighten all three of these fabrics and then we will uh, allow ourselves plenty of room to turn the board so that we don't lose accuracy. Just lay your ruler down on top of all three of those fabrics. I did try to line them up as good as I uh, possibly could, but they're still just a little bit uh, uneven, so you need to re-straighten them. And just in one cut, you're able to do all three of them at one time. And like I said, allow yourself plenty of room to turn the board. You do not want to disturb them after you have straightened them. And then what you will do is, is slide the ruler over with the template up on top. Now when cutting the pieces for this quilt, before I cut this strip, I want to show you the block one more time. We need to pay attention to where the bias edge is going to be in the block. When making a quilt, you always want the straight of grain to end up on the outside edge of the block. And when working with this one, which is template A, goes in the center, we want the bias to come in here and not out on the outside edge. So we will place the template up on the ruler uh, as you see it there, and then slide the ruler over so that you match the edge of the template with the edge of the straightened uh, fabric. And after you have done that, then cut the strips off uh, of all three of them at one time. And now you can see how it would save time uh, doing it this way. And then you would just remove the fabric out of the way. And let's move now this strip of fabric up on top of a smaller board. I like to move all of the strips uh, after I have cut them so that I have, that it's easier to turn it as I work. Now place template A up on top of that strip and we won't have any waste of fabric except for just the very first piece that we cut. And we'll just flip flop our way going across that strip and we will have like I said, no waste of fabric. Also pay attention to the fact that the first cut I make, I go backwards and then I start in a little ways and go forward. And you would just simply go across all of those strips uh, until you have used it all up. Then you would take the next group of fabrics that you want to work with and you would do the same thing. And ahead of time I have cut the strips for them and I can show you uh, how I have arranged them. The next round in the block, starting from the center going out, gets a little bit darker. So then we would cut those three fabrics at the same time and you would lay template B up on top of those and do the same thing. Again, cutting each piece and flipping uh, the template until you have used it all up. Then you would repeat the same process with the next one. Uh, which is template D, placing it on top of, of the cut strips of all three of the fabrics at one time. It's a nice way uh, not only to speed it up, but you do gain a lot of accuracy, like I said. And you would, again, one more time, repeat that same process with template E with all three fabrics at one time. So you see, it wouldn't take a very long time to cut the pieces for the quilt. The most time-consuming process probably would be deciding on the fabrics that you wanted to use for the quilt. But for this one, what I kept in mind was starting uh, from the center, I wanted it to be the lightest and then uh, 
looking for the darkest on the outside edge. Then remember I was talking about the center fabric of each of the blocks had a lot of different colors in it and each time I cut a piece I would get a different reading uh, in that center square but in the overall quilt it kind of pulls it all together. And again you will just pre-cut the strips of fabric and place your template down uh, again up on top of a smaller board so that it's easier to work on uh, by folding your fabric and just placing template C down and each time you would be able to cut two to six pieces at one time. And that's how easy it is uh, to cut all the pieces. Now if you were cutting for a plaid uh, snails trail like the first one I showed you in the program you would have to sort all of your fabrics in the light, medium, and dark groups and cut uh, accordingly to their color. And one block of that particular pattern would look like this when it's done. You have, just like in the uh, pink and teal one, you have a dark arm with the plaids, you have a medium arm, and two light arms which make up one block. That is the only difference between the plaid one and the one where I have predetermined uh, all of the colors and fabrics that I'm going to use. Also, I, I, I didn't really eliminate any of the plaids when cutting for it. I just uh, wanted it to look very antique -y and warm when it was finished. Before we go to the sewing machine, let's take a look at the steps of construction so that you know where we're going to go with the design. Each of the blocks will start out in the center, first putting on two of the lightest triangles. And then remember that each block has two pink arms and so you put two of those on. And I'm going to turn this block over so you can see how I have ironed the pieces as we go. In this particular design, I'm going to tell you to iron the seams away from the center, uh, all in one direction. It just seems to work out that uh, much better with this design. Like I've said before, each block or each design has its own strategy, and for this one, I like that the best. Then, after you have made one complete round around the center square, you start with the second one, working in a counterclockwise direction. It is easy to get mixed up in the direction that you're going with this design, so keep the first example in front of you so that you don't get mixed up. And after you have added those on, then continue on adding two more pink ones. Again, making sure that you're going in the correct direction. And you can already see the snail uh, coming out from the center of this block. And I'll turn this one over, and again, you'll see that all of the seams are ironed away from the center as we go. Also, you'll notice that when I have sewn the seam right in here, I've sewn exactly over the intersection where these two seams come together. And that's what makes that perfect point on the right side. Then, continuing on, going around that center block, you'll see that the snail is beginning to get uh, more visible as we work our way through the design. And over here, we're just about to the, to the end of the block, and we have just now got two more pink ones to add on, and the block is completed. And it is this block uh, in its finished form that makes up the whole design. And when you put four of these together, that's when you get the snail's trail uh, quilt design. And I'll put four of these down here so that you can see what one complete block looks like. Now when I put the four green into the center, you'll see that that dominates the block and uh, the purple ends out up out here on the outside edge. And if I flip these blocks around, you'll notice that I have a purple snail's trail with green ending up on the outside edge. And so if you are going to make just a pillow or something like that, you have that option to have rather uh, a purple or a green center. And just one of the blocks by itself uh, finished off would make a very nice pot holder or something like that. 
Well, let's go now to the sewing machine and I'll give you some points uh, of construction uh, as you work on the design. We will be working with uh, a scant fourth inch seam allowance just like we have in all of the other quilts that I have shown you. And we will be using again 100% cotton thread when putting the design together. We will start in the center of the, of the block like I just showed you and chain sewing would be the way to go so that you save a lot of time. And to do that you would start uh, with a little factory and just uh, make as many as you uh, feel like at one time. But I, I would suggest though that you make one block to have as your pattern to look at so that you don't get going in the wrong direction. I'm going to turn this over so that you can see that when I put these two pieces right side together that I have an equal amount of ear on both sides of this block. Now when this seam is sewn, the fourth inch will not come off in the crevice. In fact, there will be a couple of stitches that will be on the triangle below. It will be when we add the second uh, triangle on this block that that won't be the case. Uh, also, I should mention that when putting these two pieces together, that the bias edge on this block is is next to the square. And so when you have uh, this block going together, you have the straighted grain always on the outside edge of the block. And that is why we cut it uh, the way that we did. So lining up these two pieces with equal amounts of ears on both sides, notice that where I start out, there will be a couple of stitches uh, on the triangle and it won't be in the crevice. Holding on to your thread when you get started. I also don't take the time to pin my pieces together and if you're a beginner maybe you would uh, need to do that but as you get used to it uh, that's not necessary. Like I said, uh, chain sewing is the way to go because you will save a lot of time, especially when you know uh, how you're going to put the pieces together uh, in the design. Now you'll see here that when I come off here, there will be a couple of stitches on the triangle and that I won't end up in the crevice. Then I will jump to the next part of the block and you'll see when I turn it over that these two pieces have already been added on. And also I suggest that you trim off uh, the edges or the ears after this seam has been sewn. And we will skip now to the next uh, one which has the next one already uh, started. And here you'll see this intersection right here. Now when I put the next piece on, I want to make sure that I sew exactly over that point. So I will put this one on top of here, making sure that I have equal amounts of ears on both sides. And when I turn it over, I'm going to want to sew exactly over this point right in here. And also, another thing before I go to the sewing machine, this time the seam allowance will end up right in the crevice and there won't be any stitches on the triangle. And again, if you have an assembly line going, you will save an awful lot of time and uh, thread as well. Again, I'm not going to take the time to do any pinning uh, when doing this. And I have already ironed the seams going out now when I approach this area right in here, I find it helpful to use a stiletto uh, as I approach that seam and just making sure that I sew exactly over the top of it and sewing right off in the crevice. And you just continue working your way around the center of that block. 
Again, you would take the time to iron that seam away from the center. I always like to take the time to finger press first and that sets the seam away from the center and then press with an iron. And then you would just continue on and put the other piece on over here, just like the one opposite. When looking at this block, you will see, well, we'll take the next one so that you can see what I'm uh, talking about a little easier. Now you can begin to see how the purple and teal arms are exactly opposite each other, always. And I also, when I selected the fabric for this design, starting from the center, I tried to keep the value of color the same, meaning the same brightness or, or lightness. And as I worked my way out, then these two are the same value. And as I go out to the outside edge of the block, they keep getting darker. Now when we get to this part of the block, we're ready to add on uh, the next piece. Again, making sure that you go in the counterclockwise direction. So this one would be the next one we would add. Now this time, when I put this one on, like the others, make sure that you have equal amounts of ears on both sides. And again, this seam will have a couple of stitches on the triangle in the beginning. It's when you add the second triangle in a round that you sew off in the crevice. That was hard for me to get used to. I always wanted it to end up right in the crevice when I was sewing, and it, that just doesn't work out that way. Notice how I'm sewing exactly over the point where those two seams come together, and using the stiletto to guide it uh, certainly does help a lot. And when I get to the end, again, a couple more uh, stitches on the uh, triangle. Then take the time to finger press it and move it away from the center and you begin to see how the snail is coming together. Working your way out all the way to the outside edge of the block, and this one is just about completed, and I think I forgot to mention that each time I have added a triangle, I do clip off the ears on the outside edge, like this one has been done uh, here. It just makes a nice cleaner back, and also when you come to do the hand quilting, you don't have that extra fabric in the area. And all this one needs now is a couple of pink triangles uh, to finish off the block, one on each side. And this time, when I sew this one on, or the very last ones, you do sew off right in the crevice. Always putting the piece that you add on the bottom is a rule to remember. And also, it's very important that the bias edge you're attaching is the one that goes next to the block, making sure that the outside edge of the block uh, stays straight on grain. If the outside edge of the block should happen to be the one that's on the bias edge, it's harder to put the blocks together in the finished quilt. Uh, that's just a rule that, that is true for all quilting. Also notice that I have done no back stitching throughout any of this piecing. I just feel that it creates bulk in the corners and it's harder to press uh, the seams uh, in the end. Again, as you approach this center uh, intersection, guiding it with the stiletto. And also, it's helpful to keep that fabric down right in front of the needle. And using a foot like this makes it easy to see where you want to go. If you had a bridge across there, it might be a little more difficult. And sewing right off of that uh, crevice. Again, take the time to press that seam away from the center. Now, when you get to the point where you have all of the blocks sewn, you, have, you still have more decisions to make. And when you look at the overall quilt when it's finished, you'll see that in this particular one, that the purple is the one that dominates the design. There are uh, nine purple snails in the quilt. And to determine which way to go when I re reached the end of the quilt. I did a computer printout of all of the blocks sewn together. 
And it was an experiment that was worthwhile because I knew exactly how I wanted to set the blocks when I was putting it together. In this particular one, I have a nine green snails trail, and this one over here, I have nine purple ones. And it was very obvious to me after I printed it in color that I wanted the purple ones to dominate this quilt. Now, if you don't have a computer that you can print it out on, you can do it with a flash camera uh, where you can instantly see uh, the results of the design or just coloring the blocks with color crayons will also help you decide which way you want to place uh, the quilt. Also, it's a lot easier to make the decisions about where to put the blocks uh, ahead of time rather than having to rip them after you have put them together once and then change your mind. The outside edge of the quilt was finished off with a quilting design that complemented it. And the stencil uh, that I used looks like this. I designed it to have the same flow that would complement these snails in the quilt for a very nice ending. Do.